Oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what is going on with this parts? Let's look at this thing. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is Boost My Build, the series where we take your PC build list, we tear them up, we put them back together, and we massively increase your performance. And we've got two, two insane builds for this episode. We have a $1,300 USD build in Australia, but it's completely upside down, looking for good 1440p performance. Can we get it turned right side up? And we've got an insane Godzilla build with no budget. You heard me right, no budget. Can we get this thing on the right track despite the lack of a 4090? Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Deepcool and their new Morpheus Modular ATX Plus case allowing you to fully customize your PC build. Easily switch between single and dual chamber configurations. All parts are included. Enjoy maximum compatibility with support for EATX motherboards, 420 millimeter radiators, and extra long GPUs. And the Morpheus adds all the premium features, including high airflow panels, a fan bracket with 340 millimeter fans, a bevy of IO ports, and a digital readout for CPU and GPU temps. To maximize your performance and customization, check out the Morpheus modular case using the links in the video description. All right, we got Haas Wheelbarrow. Hi there, I'm located in Australia. Okay, Australia, land of crocodiles, kangaroos, and amazing gaming PCs. And I've got a budget around $2,000 AUD. That's pretty good. That's around $1,300 USD, current currency conversion, obviously. And they want to use it for gaming on titles such as Assetto, Corza, Competizone. I never pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Flame me down in the comments for that. Competizone and Assetto Corza. And that's with mods. All right, let's see what you got. Okay, 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 okay. I never know what to say in the these types of builds because if you put all this together, you'd be fine, you'd be fine. I just don't think we have the level of performance we'd like to see in this build at this price point. And you finish, let's start there. You finish at $2,068.88. That's Aussie dollars. So that's about, I don't know, rough math here, 1,350 US dollars. So we're already over our budget. I'm not seeing that level of performance here. I think you kind of came close, but no cigar. And, and there's a couple of different culprits for that. Let's start off with what else, the GPU. You went with the RX 7700 XT. My big complaint with this card is not the GPU performance itself. It's actually quite good. It's the price. The price is crap for this card, absolute garbage. AMD has just lost their minds with this GPU. I have no idea what they're doing with it. The 7800 XT can often be found for not that much more money and gives tons, tons more performance, tons more performance. Or we could alternatively go to something cheaper. And if we did like the 6700 XT, 12 gigabyte, I would maybe think about going down to a Ryzen 5000 platform. We could save a ton of money. You could do other things with that money. So I feel like this GPU kind of puts us in a little bit of a no man's land. For the CPU, the Ryzen 5 7600X perfectly fine. We could, of course, go with the 7600 non-X if it's effectively the same price. I haven't checked yet. 359. We could look at 13600K here. Look at 13th gen in Australia. See if see what the prices are because that would be its closest competitor. For the cooler, look, I, I love this cooler. The Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240 Illusion. It's an amazing looking 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. I don't know if they're still making a ton of these coolers, so it seems like they moved on because they have a V2, which they lose the Illusion uh, pump head on it. They no longer has that illusion pump head, which I absolutely loved. I used it in my old Ryzen 5600X build that you used to see next to me all the time, but it is getting a lot more expensive because it seems like it's not made that often. 129 Aussie dollars sounds maybe about right for a liquid cooler, but we should just double check because again, I'd love to pump up that GPU. You can buy B650M Gaming X, AX. I, I have to look at the Aussie market. Typically in the US, this is not a well-priced motherboard, although I think Gigabyte probably especially in the new year, we'll start cutting prices on it. This to me is a $140, $150 max motherboard, even though it's got great features on it. Similar in terms of features, in terms of the ASRock board that I often recommend, which is the Pro RS board. But let's talk about your RAM because I don't love your RAM. In fact, I kind of hate your RAM. You went with two by 16 gigabyte kit of DDR5 5200CL40. Now listen, I know in markets outside the US, DDR5 hasn't necessarily gotten as cheap as it has here. And that's why my guidance for like our best RAM for gaming video, as well as our 7600 guide, I said, look, there are other kits you could consider. I know I said 5200 CL40 at some point in one of my videos, but I just feel like probably spend another 20 bucks here and just get massively better memory. That would be my recommendation. The drive, the Western Digital Black SN 771 terabyte, generally a good drive, but 
$125 Aussie for one terabyte seems super expensive. Doesn't have DRAM. I just feel like for whatever reason, it's super expensive. In the case, you got the Fractal Design Pop Air. Look, it's a nice case. $159 Aussie though, that is seems a little bit more expensive. I think we could probably do better. The other thing to consider here, since we do have a micro ATX motherboard, we could look at a micro ATX case that way you get rid of any of the gaps. I know some people hate putting a micro ATX motherboard in a full size ATX case. I personally don't mind, but we could probably even save a little bit of money. For the power supply, you went with a Corsair RM750E. I think we could probably get away with 650 watts on this. This is a great unit. It's A tier rated on the PSU Cultus list. Nothing against this unit per se. 160 Aussie dollars, maybe it's $170, depending on where you're able to get it from. Does seem a little expensive though, uh, even for this unit, even given the currency conversion out there, I'm just wondering if maybe we could kind of downsize the PSU to something that's more in line with what our build actually needs and pump some of the extra money into our GPU. So all told for 2,060 Aussie dollars, it's kind of about 1,350 US dollars. I'm just not seeing the level of performance that I'd like to see here. It's not bad. It's not bad by any stretch of imagination, but I would love to pump this up and get you the best sim racing PC out there. I called this a 2000 Aussie dollar or $1,300 USD 1440p destroyer. We're gonna wreck 1440p gaming with this build and you're gonna have amazing frames in your all your sim racing titles. I finished at $1,982.97 Aussie dollars or Aussie cents, whatever those are. And we're gonna get insane levels of performance. Let's talk for instance about the GPU. Where else are we gonna start the GPU? Of course we're gonna go there. I picked up the Sapphire Pulse RX 7800 XT 16 gigabyte. That's right, not the 7700, but the 7800 for only about 70 bucks more. $849 right now over at center.com. I'm not really familiar with all of these different Australian retailers. Let me know in the comments if I should avoid any of these in particular, but I didn't pick the cheapest one overall in PC Part Picker. I picked kind of a middle one because I wasn't sure about the pricing over there and I wanted to give you enough money to be able to pick a different model in case this is not a good retailer or something like that. Again, I just don't know, but I would pick this up. This is a really, really good 7800 XT 849 and it's gonna give you way more performance. Speaking of that performance, Let's take a look at benchmarks. This is Tom's Hardware RX 7800 XT review. This is their nine game rasterization g mean at 1440p ultra settings. So no ray tracing titles here. This is just rasterization. Look at that 7800 XT. First of all, let's look at a comparison to the 4070. Really kind of smokes the 4070. And remember the 4070 is considerably more expensive than 7800 XT typically. That's why I say smokes it. If they were the same price, I would call it a little closer, but it's not. It's like a hundred bucks more, $100. USD. But then let's look at the 7700 XT, 89.7 average FPS, 71 on the 1% lows. You step up to the 7800 XT and it's about 15, almost 20% more performance there. And it's not much more money. That's why the 7700 XT is so terribly priced right now and AMD has got to do something about it, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to grab the right GPU for you instead. For the CPU, it just made a little bit of sense to switch out the 7600 for the 7600X that you had. There's about a $20 difference. When you go to buy it, just buy whichever's cheaper. I'd only go to the 7600X if it's like, $10 more, that would be fine. Otherwise I would just go cheaper. You're never really gonna see the performance at this GPU level. So 323 Aussie dollars, I'd snap this up. For the cooler, honestly, any budget tower air cooler will do just fine. However, I decided to pick up a slightly more mid-range cooler in the Deepcool AG500. It has a couple more heat pipes. It's a little thicker, a little denser, and is absolutely amazing. Cooler for 49 Aussie dollars. That's a great, great price for it. That's why I picked it up. But if this is not on sale when you go to buy it, I would go ahead instead just buy any budget tower air cooler. The AG5400 or the AK400 would also be good. Now I went away from your liquid cooler. This is an area if you wanna spend more money and you wanna get that liquid cooler for the aesthetics, you absolutely can. I decided to go this route instead. I thought it would still look really cool. You can always add that liquid cooler at a future date if you want, but I wanted to get the GPU because you can't just add a hundred more dollars to your GPU later. You're gonna end up with that 7700 XT and that's not great. For the motherboard, I stuck it out with your Gigabyte B650M Gaming X AX. Turns out this is a good price board in this region. In the US, this board tends to be slightly overpriced. However, in Australia, very, very good value to it. Now listen, it's effectively, I don't wanna call it entry level because it's got good VRMs on it. It's got a number of things like the M.2 heat shield on it. It's a more premium 
than entry-level board, but it doesn't have upgraded audio or those kind of super premium features we would typically expect to, to find on a very expensive motherboard. But honestly, for, for Ryzen 7000, this is gonna do the job, and I think it looks pretty nice. For the RAM, I went ahead and got you a DDR5 6000 CL30 kit. That is where we wanna be, and it only costs 20 Aussie dollars more. That's like such a small price to pay to get memory that's gonna run really, really well with that Ryzen 7600 uh, CPU. Again, 179 versus the kit that you you were gonna do, I think that was like 5200 CL40, way slower, and you were only gonna save $20, so I would pick this up instead. For the SSD, we just swapped it out for a cheaper but still good unit. I don't know why yours was so expensive. It's possible it just sold out. A lot of things are selling out during the holidays, so $89 right now for the Team Cordae Zero Z440. This is a Gen 4 SSD with DRAM on it. It's gonna be phenomenal for your build, and it's a lot cheaper. For the case, I went with a case that I really like. I believe friend of the channel, Jim, has done a build in this case, and it looks super awesome. Awesome. This is the Colink, I never say this right, Citadel Mesh ARGB. It's a micro ATX case, looks super nice. It's got really good build quality for the price, which is really, really cheap at 95. It's got three included ARGB fans. They're pretty high quality. They're both the ring fan as well as the full RGB on them. Absolutely love this case. I wish they sold these in the US. For the PSU, I just decided to shave off a little more in terms of the cost. Uh, went with an equally good MSI MPG A750 GF. Now I will say about this unit, it's not PCIe Gen 5 and it's not ATX 3.0. I don't think that's really important for this level of power supply. It's still ATX rated, so we'll do absolutely fine. Here's another area though. If you do want to invest a little bit more money, it's absolutely fine to buy that Corsair unit instead. Again, it's about $20, $30 difference. So for $1,982.97, now that's Australian dollars, for about $1,300 US, we built an insanely good, insanely good 1440p level destroyer build where you could hook up a 240 hertz PC monitor to this and probably get super good frames, at least medium to high settings, if not ultra settings, in a lot of these racing titles that will just pump out FPS. So hope you feel like your build is boosted. All right, we got Choco Nuts. Choco Nuts says hi there from Colorado. They're putting together their build to play all sorts of high-end games, streaming, daily use, but budget is no issue, okay? This is a Godzilla build. I felt Godzilla coming, all right. But the following happened. They ordered a 4090 from Walmart. Something happened. They canceled it. Yeah, try buying a 4090 right now. It's very, very difficult. Scalpers are in there. It's just completely crazy given the situation in China. And now it seems like they're smuggling them into China. It's just insane, absolutely insane. Themes of the GPU shortage again. I don't think it's going to last forever, but it's happening right now. Should they purchase a 7900 XTX or a 4080, they're going to be playing on an Odyssey OLED G9 monitor, super ultra wide. And then they got a lot of other questions about different components. All right, let's see what you got. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is going on with this parts? Let's look at this thing. Okay, let's start off with the budget. You finished out at $4,827.62. So basically just under $5,000 US. And man, I got to tell you, if this is the best we can do for 5,000, we are in big trouble. But I know we're not into price or performance right now. I'm just not seeing $5,000 worth of performance here. That's my problem. And now listen, if you put all this together, I, maybe it would work. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here that I'm just not happy about. I'm not happy with the PSU. But let's let's start off with the GPU. Because while you think you have an RTX 4090 in here, Jason, I got the Gigabyte Arrow OC 4090. It's all white. It's really awesome. Hey, I checked this one out at CES last year at the Gigabyte booth, looked aw it looks awesome. The problem here is you go to buy it, right? And you're like, oh, Jason, it's right here at Amazon. It probably doesn't even exist. See this little plus sign here? Uh, this basically means it, it's either a third party seller or it just doesn't exist. So let's click on it. Yeah, it doesn't exist, basically. I'm sure if we click this, we get a lot of third-party sellers that we've never heard of before that had almost no ratings. They're all scalpers, basically. So I just, at this point, you know, I, I mean, look, Amazon does its best, but these folks are just like, they're bots, basically. So at this point, trying to buy a 4090 in the US or pr pretty much anywhere is insane. It's back to shortage level stuff. So I would just stay away from this GPU because you just effectively can't get it. You're like, what about when Micro Center gets it? I don't know, maybe Micro Center will get it. Maybe they won't. It's really, really tough to say. I would probably proceed as though they're not gonna happen. If you want, you can always wait for the 4080 Super. Who knows what the performance of that's gonna be, or you could wait maybe a couple months to see if the shortages bear out. But honestly, if you're ready to build a gaming PC and you've got tons of money, I'd probably build with the 7900 XTX and upgrade later if I if I was really worried about it. For the CPU, I like the Ryzen 7800X3D quite a bit. You're just gaming, you just wanna do normal stuff. So if you're saying, also Jason, I wanna run a professional video editing studio and do all this, stuff, then we would look, I think, at a, like a 14700K instead. With what we're doing, I do like the 7800X3D. I have some questions about your overall 
overall build. So you got the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 here for your cooler. You know it's all black, you know it doesn't have any RGB, but everything else in this build is like white RGB. So I'm just, I'm just not really understanding the theme here. I love this cooler, but I'd probably pick a different one. In terms of the motherboard, you went with the ASUS ROG Strix X670E-A Gaming. This board is massive overkill. Again, I know we're not doing, you know, price to performance here. You will get almost identical performance out of the B650 Strix-A board, but this one's got a little bit more metal on, in terms of aesthetics. It does have a little bit more rear IO. You do not need all the rear IO on this thing. Trust me, trust me. It's an insane amount, insane amount. The, the B650 is enough for gaming, but again, if we don't care about money, yes, we probably do pick up this board. But my big problem here is your RAM. Again, we're going money's no object, then why did we get DDR5 6000 seal 32 memory? And, and you got 64 gigs, which is fine. 64 gigs is fine, but why go 6000 CL32 when we can get even faster RAM for this CPU? And I don't think it's gonna cost us any more money. In fact, I think we could probably get a little cheaper. Let's get to the storage situation. I don't know what is going on. I'm gonna assume all these SATA drives you're dragging from either a previous build or something like that, because we got some rando silicon power to terabyte drive, and then we got a couple of Team Force Vulcan that I used to recommend if you need a SATA, and it's, it's still fine but they're out of stock everywhere. They're, they were $79. You can't really find these drives anywhere. So I'm gonna assume that we're dragging these over from a previous build, but it gets even worse. It gets even worse. We got a couple of these two terabyte SK Hynix P41 drives. These are good gen four drives, but honestly, I don't know if I'd spend $145 on them for sure. I think I would get something else. They just seem super expensive. It could be that they're completely sold out over at Amazon right now. And that's what we're seeing. And then on top of that, we've got some random Acer Predator GM 7000. Now this is a good gen four SSD, four terabyte. It has DRAM on it. Pretty good price at 250. But then on top of that, we've thrown in the T-Force Cardia Zero, the Z540, which honestly, I didn't even know existed but it's the PCI Gen 5 drive. Even if I had all the money in the world, I would not buy a Gen 5 drive. They're just not worth it. Not worth it, the cooling and everything else. You gotta put it in the specific slot. There's just no benefit to this drive. I would have gone, if you feel like you need this more storage, I'd go all four terabyte drives and I get the same drive. For the case, you went with the Deepcool CH560 Digital. This is an amazing case. We did our RTX 4090 and Ryzen 7950X build in this thing and it is really, really amazing just nothing but good things to say about the case. Well, slightly not the best cable management in the back, could be a little bit better, but honestly, once you get it built, this thing looks amazing and it's got tons and tons of airflow. But I hate your power supply. We went with the Vetro GV1000. I believe, I believe this is a C tier rated, maybe B tier on the speculativist rated unit on the PSU cultist list. I'll have to look it up. $135, look at, if it is a good rated unit, that might be fine. Uh, my understanding is it's not and, on top of that, we have a thousand watts when I would recommend 1200 watts for this build. So we've undersized our PSU for our current configuration. So for $4,827, I just not, I'm not seeing the value here. And I think we could do better, especially given that some of these components like the GPU, we're just not gonna be able to get anytime soon. I call this the insane $3,500 all white max everything gaming PC, cause you're gonna crush everything. Either super high frame rates at 1440p or insanely high frame rates at 4K. Just take your pick, take your pick. And now. I I will admit I cheated a little bit. We finished out at $3,370.49, but you'll notice I'm not using a 4090 because you can't get one right now in the US unless you're willing to do really, really crazy things. And I'm gonna just assume that we're not. Besides, money's no object, so we'll just upgrade one later, right? Or remember, we are expecting probably the 5090 at the end of 2024, so you'll use this in the meantime, and then, oh, then you'll upgrade to your 5090. Let's talk about the GPU and the GPU performance. I'm gonna give you a choice. You can either go one of two ways. You can go with the Sapphire Nitro Radeon RX 7900 XTX. I wanna say the reason I got this, there are all white ones available. There's gonna be from Power Color, it's the Hellhound Spectral version. And then ASRock has an all white version as well. I think it's the Tai Chi. I went with this one instead. It's like a gunmetal gray. I think this would make a huge statement piece right in the middle of that all white build. Really emphasize it. it's got two RGB bars on it. It's gonna look insane. I just, I'm super excited about the way this GPU looks. If you're not similarly excited, go with one of the all white GPUs instead. Alternatively, you could go with the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte, or of course you can wait for the 4080 Super, which we're expecting probably sometime in the first quarter of 2024. So if you don't mind waiting a couple months, $1,299 basically is about $150 price difference between the two of them. And this is the Aero all white version. You can get slightly cheaper RTX 4080s around more like $1,199. They have come up 
up to MSRP during the holidays. There's, they are selling through pretty quickly. I like this one because it's all white. Obviously, the all white ones you're going to pay a little bit more for. Let's talk about performance differences. This is the RTX 4070 review. So I, I just have all three cards that we're really focused on here. This is from TechSpot. I'll leave the whole review link down in the video description. Let's look at 1440p, then we'll look at 4K. 4090 gets 213 average FPS across 13 game average. Now, some of these titles include ray tracing by default. If you don't care about ray tracing, if you just want rasterized performance, the 7900 XTX will perform better than you're seeing here. You just got to turn ray tracing off on the games that automatically turn it on. But look at that, it does perform pretty well. 183 average FPS, basically it's a dead heat between that and the RTX 4080. Dead heat between the two, and then you can figure out like, specific games that you want to play, what's going to be better for you. If we look at 4K, the thing about Radeon 7000 versus RTX 4000, it's flipped from the last generation. Last generation, as you went up in resolution, the GeForce GPUs would perform better. They would scale better. This generation, it's the opposite. It's the Radeon GPUs that are scaling better as you go up in resolution. I don't know if that's memory bandwidth issues for the RTX 4080 or whatnot. We'll have to find out. The super version, maybe that'll correct some of this, but right now the 7900 XTX does pull to a slight lead when you go up to 4K, even with ray tracing involved in some of these titles. Let's talk about the other revisions I made. I stuck it out with the Ryzen 7 7800X3. I think that's the smart play to make right now. And I also stuck it out with the ASUS ROG Strix X670E-A. I almost downgraded, but it just kind of feels pointless if money is no object. Let's talk about things I upgraded. I went ahead and swapped out the cooler. The 7800X3D does not need a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. So this is just kind of gratuitous levels of cooling anyway. It's really just to fill out that case with all the fans in there. If we're gonna do that, let's get a cooler with a lot more bling to it. So let's go with an all white cooler and let's go with an LCD screen on it. I went with the NZXT Kraken Elite 360. Now, the difference between the Elite and the non-Elite, it's just this LCD pump head screen here. This is the higher resolution version. Honestly, you probably couldn't tell the difference between the two, but it's not that much more. And it's $282 right now over at Amazon. I absolutely love this cooler. The price usually puts me off from it, but hey, money's no object. Then for the RAM, I went ahead and got DDR5 6000 CL30. I got you 64 gigs. In fact, we use this exact same kit of Corsair Vengeance RGB in our RTX 4090 and Ryzen 7950X build. We have it operating right now. That's our video editing PC. It looks really, really amazing. We were able to get a little bit cheaper. I have a feeling some of these kind of higher capacity, high speed kits are selling through right now. So you're just gonna have to pay a little bit of a price premium in order to get it. $234, I think we got ours for just 200 bucks, which was a really, really good price at the time. This is gonna ensure the maximum memory performance, even though the 7800X3D really doesn't give that much of a crap about the memory, this is gonna make sure that we have no memory bottlenecks whatsoever. For the drive, I went ahead and got rid of all those crazy drives. Let's just get one drive, let's get it four terabytes and let's do it three times. That's gonna give you 12 terabytes of space. If you fill that up, then you can start adding in more. I kept all your SSDs, your, your regular two and a half inch SSDs. If you're dragging that from a previous build, yeah, just go ahead and throw them in, that's gonna be fine. But I am just wanted to streamline this so when you open File Manager, it's not like 72 things looking at you. Let's just simplify, simplify, simplify. I went with the MSI Spadium M 480 Pro. This is PCIe Gen 4. It's got DRAM on it. Really, really good performer. 244, really good price for this level of performance. And then for the power supply, we still need about 1200 watts for this build. About 1200 watts for this build. So I went with the Thermaltake Top Power GF3 Snow Edition. This is A tier rated on the PSU Cultus list. It's fully modular. It's going to come with all white cables to it. It's ATX 3.0. It's PCIe Gen 5. We don't need the PCIe Gen 5 part because we're not going with a 4090. But if you do go with a 4090 or a 5090, you know, next year sometime, you'll have the connector for it, which is two thumbs up there. $199 right now over at Newegg. So all told for $3,370.49. Remember, everything is linked down in the video description. We basically took the build that you kind of templated, but we massively upped the performance and the coolness of it. We streamed like all those crazy SSDs and NVMe SSDs you had going on. We got you a high performance GPU, either the 4080 or the R. X 7900 XTX 24 gigabyte. And we got you premium models of each. And we kept that amazing all white aesthetic. And we added some nice RGB bling to the cooler and that LCD screen. So I hope you feel like your build is boosted. Remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe 
click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Hey, speaking of cool content, did you check out our CPU market update where we go through all the CPUs right now? And we even talk about 2024 pricing right here. Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.